If we don't put a price tag on nature, we are effectively saying nature is worth nothing. Nature scores as zero. Gretchen is trying to put price tags on it to make it visible in our economy and to make it visible in our societies. In many parts of the world, natural resources are under pressure, like here in California. Now the question is, what is the true value of the remaining natural capital? Well, it's a lot more than the timber, fruit, fish, and other products that we usually think of. We don't tend to think about all of the other life support services that we need from land. Overall, we have a really nice, stable climate, and that's thanks to all of the natural vegetation, the forest and shrubland and other areas. So that's a big service, is stabilizing the balance of gases in the atmosphere that keeps our climate favorable for human life and all our activities. With um, the climate extremes that we've been experiencing, there's been devastating flooding in, in many parts of the world. And it's interesting how it works. Forest is kind of like a sponge. This rain, if there were not forest there, it would just wash away the topsoil and flash off the land in, in really dangerous flood events. But with forest, the rain comes down, it first hits a lot of leaves, and then it eventually softly penetrates the soil and gets stored for many months and soaking up that water. And then with all their fine roots and with the many different types of creatures that live in the soil below forest, the water gets cleaned. And what comes out of a healthy forest is water that's, you know, really good to drink. Today, scientists from ecology and economy are working together, trying to put a value on ecosystem services. But some years ago, cooperation was difficult. And quite many economists looked down at the ecologists. We couldn't talk to each other. Fortunately, we can do that now. We understand each other, and more important, we have respect for each other. The scientific task is to be able to put a value into the market economy of all the regulating services offered by nature. We know that ecosystems do these things for us, and we know that we currently uh, undervalue them in the marketplace, and this is a frontier of research right now. A classic example regarding valuation of natural capital is how New York City is supplied with fresh water. They've had beautiful water supply for the whole history of the city. It comes out of a forest just like this one, about 100 miles to the north of the city. But in the 1980s, there was a big development boom, a lot of houses and other things up in the forest area, and really threatened the health of all the people, nine million people in New York City drinking that water. So city officials were trying to decide what to do, and they thought, OK, we'll build a water filtration plant. But that was shown to cost between six and eight billions of dollars. That was enough to make everybody stop. And for the first time, really think seriously about the value of forests for supplying that water purification service. And they decided, well, instead of paying six to eight billion dollars, we'll go in and we'll just pay it turned out one to one and a half billion dollars to restore the forest, to buy some of the land right along the open waterway, the streams. So at a much lower price tag, New York City is getting its pure water in a way that not only supplies water, but also protects many other benefits that the forest provides at the same time. To agriculture, another ecosystem service is economically essential. Over 70% of the world's major food crops require the services of a little bee to come and move tiny pollen grains from one flower to another flower, and often from one plant to another plant. These bees, they love living on farms when the farms are growing and all the flowers are blooming and that sort of thing. But the rest of the year, then the bees are off in the other habitats, the more native, natural bits of the landscape around farms. So they need those other areas in order to maintain their life cycle across the year. And then they come and they give their services for free to farmers during the growing season.
At coffee plantations in Costa Rica, the studies by Gretchen Daly and her colleagues led to interesting discoveries. We quantified the level of service provision different distances from remaining rainforest into coffee farms. And we found that farmers lost over 25% of the yield and they had lower quality beans. So the farmers that did best were the farmers right next to the rainforest, within about one kilometer of the rainforest. Carbon sequestration is another essential part of nature's services. But it has been difficult to deal with this in the stalling global negotiations on climate change. Many people are pushing to put this price tag on climate stabilization services. And it's tricky to do this. In the case of climate stability, a forest anywhere can give us that benefit. A major part of Gretchen Daly's recent scientific work is based within the Natural Capital Project that developed methods for measuring the economic value of ecosystem services. What we've put together is a software system called INVEST that lets decision makers in a company or in a government or in a community to visualize across a landscape or a seascape you know, where is the natural capital today? Where are the values concentrated? And if we were to invest in nature, where could we do it with the greatest return on investment for society? The debate I'm in now with other colleagues is what is the probability that we can avoid a crash, a total collapse of civilization? I'm very pessimistic, as are all of my colleagues. And Gretchen Daly is one of the reasons not to be pessimistic because she has done a marvelous job not just of building the whole idea of, of ecosystem services and natural capital into something that is now well understood in the scientific community, but she's actually been working with governments all over the world to get something done about it. China is an amazing country in every possible respect, and one unfortunate dimension is that they've had the real extremes in environmental catastrophe. So in their push to develop rapidly and improve human well-being and prosperity, they have taken their environment to absolute extremes. In 1998, uh, they had one of the worst flooding events in human history. It was a biblical flood. And that prompted the Chinese government to stop and consider what was going on. And it turns out it was deforestation. So the government overnight declared a ban on logging. And on top of that, they started paying people to stop deforestation and reforest. So China now has the highest rate of reforestation anywhere in the world. There is also a growing public interest for valuation of natural capital, like here in a local NGO that has invited Gretchen Daly for an evening lecture. I think people understand capital. We have this bank that we may be depleting and that we need to replenish. I think it sort of just makes instinctual sense to people. I think the whole concept of ecosystem services is growing like an avalanche over the earth right now. Without Gretchen, I'm not sure that that ever would have happened. She takes scientific principles and then looks for these situations where you can kind of create these win-wins. It's critical that we bring in climate stability, flood control, water purification, and these basic benefits that we pay for one way or another, either through nature or through trying to build substitutes, which we don't do very successfully and we can't do on the scale required. So this is a very pragmatic way of at least making society more aware and making our economic system function much better in uh, bringing some of these values into the mainstream of decision making. She's an extremely enthusiastic and, and happy person to be with. <laughs> People really enjoy working with her. Everybody who works with her is delighted that she's getting this recognition. Well deserved. The 
only time I've ever seen Gretchen upset with me was when I didn't have enough chocolate in lab meetings. <laughs>